function. Autonomic functions of the brain include the regulation or rhythmic control of the heart rate and rate of breathing and maintaining homeostasis. Blood pressure and heart rate are influenced by the vasomotor center of the medulla, which causes arteries and veins to be somewhat constricted at rest. It does this by influencing the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems via the vagus nerve. 90. Information about blood pressure is generated by baroreceptors in aortic bodies in the aortic arch and passed to the brain along the afferent fibers of the vagus nerve. Information about the pressure changes in the carotid sinus comes from carotid bodies located near the carotid artery and this is passed via nerve joining with the glossopharyngeal nerve. This information travels up to the solitary nucleus in the medulla. Signals from here influence the vasomotor center to adjust vein and artery constriction accordingly. 91. The brain controls the rate of breathing, mainly by respiratory centers in the medulla and pons. 92. The respiratory centers control respiration by generating motor signals that are passed down the spinal cord along the phrenic nerve to the diaphragm and other muscles of respiration. This is a mixed nerve that carries sensory information back to the centers. There are four respiratory centers, three with a more clearly defined function, and an apneustic center with a less clear function. In the medulla a dorsal respiratory group causes the desire to breathe in and receives sensory information directly from the body. Also in the medulla, the ventral respiratory group influences breathing out during exertion. In the pons the pneumotaxic center influences the duration of each breath, 92, and the apneustic center seems to have an influence on inhalation. The respiratory centers directly senses blood carbon dioxide and pH. Information about blood oxygen carbon dioxide and pH levels are also sensed on the walls of arteries in the peripheral chemoreceptors of the aortic and carotid bodies. This information is passed via the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves to the respiratory centers. High carbon dioxide, an acidic pH, or low oxygen stimulate the respiratory centers. 92. The desire to breathe in is also affected by pulmonary stretch receptors in the lungs which, when activated, prevent the lungs from overinflating by transmitting information to the respiratory centers via the vagus nerve. 92. The hypothalamus in the diencephalon is involved in regulating many functions of the body. Functions include neuroendocrine regulation, regulation of the circadian rhythm, control of the autonomic nervous system, and the regulation of fluid and food intake. The circadian rhythm is controlled by two main cell groups in the hypothalamus. The anterior hypothalamus includes the suprachiasmatic nucleus and the ventral lateral preoptic nucleus which through gene expression cycles, generates a roughly 24-hour circadian clock. In the circadian day an ultradian rhythm takes control of the sleeping pattern. Sleep is an essential requirement for the body and brain and allows the closing down and resting of the body systems. There are also findings that suggest that the daily buildup of toxins in the brain are removed during sleep. 93. Whilst awake the brain consumes a fifth of the body's total energy needs. Sleep necessarily reduces this use and gives time for the restoration of energy giving ADP. The effects of sleep deprivation show the absolute need for sleep. 94. The lateral hypothalamus contains orexinergic neurons that control appetite and arousal through their projections to the ascending reticular activating system. 95. 96. The hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland through the release of peptides such as oxytocin and vasopressin, as well as dopamine into the median eminence. Through the autonomic projections, the hypothalamus is involved in regulating functions such as blood pressure, heart rate, breathing, sweating, and other homeostatic mechanisms. 97. The hypothalamus also plays a role in thermal regulation. And when stimulated by the immune system, is capable of generating a fever. The hypothalamus is influenced by the kidneys. When blood pressure falls, the renin released by the kidneys stimulates a need to drink. The hypothalamus also regulates food intake through autonomic signals and hormone release by the digestive system. 98. Language. Main article. Language processing in the brain. See also. Two streams hypothesis section two auditory systems while language functions were traditionally thought to be localized to Wernicke's area and Broca's area, 99.
It is now mostly accepted that a wider network of cortical regions contributes to language functions. 100, 101, 102. The study on how language is represented, processed, and acquired by the brain is called neurolinguistics, which is a large multidisciplinary field drawing from cognitive neuroscience, cognitive linguistics, and psycholinguistics. 103. Lateralization. Main article. Lateralization of brain function further information. Functional specialization. Brain. The cerebrum has a contralateral organization with each hemisphere of the brain interacting primarily with one half of the body. The left side of the brain interacts with the right side of the body, and vice versa. The developmental cause for this is uncertain. 104. Motor connections from the brain to the spinal cord, and sensory connections from the spinal cord to the brain, both cross sides in the brain stem. Visual input follows a more complex rule. The optic nerves from the two eyes come together at a point called the optic chiasm, and half of the fibers from each nerve split off to join the other. 105. The result is that connections from the left half of the retina, in both eyes, go to the left side of the brain, whereas connections from the right half of the retina go to the right side of the brain. 106. Because each half of the retina receives light coming from the opposite half of the visual field, the functional consequence is that visual input from the left side of the world goes to the right side of the brain, and vice versa. 104. Thus, the right side of the brain receives somatosensory input from the left side of the body, and visual input from the left side of the visual field. 107. 108. The left and right sides of the brain appear symmetrical, but they function asymmetrically. 109. For example, the counterpart of the left hemisphere motor area controlling the right hand is the right hemisphere area controlling the left hand. There are, however, several important exceptions, involving language and spatial cognition. The left frontal lobe is dominant for language. If a key language area in the left hemisphere is damaged, it can leave the victim unable to speak or understand. 109. Whereas equivalent damage to the right hemisphere would cause only minor impairment to language skills. A substantial part of current understanding of the interactions between the two hemispheres has come from the study of split. Brain patients, people who underwent surgical transection of the corpus callosum in an attempt to reduce the severity of epileptic seizures, 110. These patients do not show unusual behavior that is immediately obvious, but in some cases can behave almost like two different people in the same body, with the right hand taking an action and then the left hand undoing it. 110. Comma, these patients, when briefly shown a picture on the right side of the point of visual fixation, are able to describe it verbally, but when the picture is shown on the left, are unable to describe it, but may be able to give an indication with the left hand of the nature of the object shown. Comma, 112. Emotion. Main article. Emotion further information. Effective neuroscience emotions are generally defined as two-step multi-component processes involving elicitation, followed by psychological feelings, appraisal, expression, autonomic responses, and action tendencies. 113. Attempts to localize basic emotions to certain brain regions have been controversial, with some research finding no evidence for specific locations corresponding to emotions and instead circuitry involved in general emotional processes. The amygdala, orbitofrontal cortex, mid and anterior insula cortex and lateral prefrontal cortex, appeared to be involved in generating the emotions, while weaker evidence was found for the ventral tegmental area. Ventral pallidum and nucleus accumbens in incentive salience, 114. Others, however, have found evidence of activation of specific regions such as the basal ganglia and happiness, the subcalazal cingulate cortex and sadness, and amygdala in fear. 115. Cognition. Main article. Cognition further information. Prefrontal cortex section executive function the brain is responsible for cognition. 116. 117. Which functions through numerous processes and executive functions. 117. 118. 119. Executive functions include the ability to filter information and tune out irrelevant stimuli with attentional control and cognitive inhibition, the ability to process and manipulate information held in working memory, 
the ability to think about multiple concepts simultaneously and switch tasks with cognitive flexibility, the ability to inhibit impulses and prepotent responses with inhibitory control, and the ability to determine the relevance of information or appropriateness of an action. 118, 119. Higher order executive functions require the simultaneous use of multiple basic executive functions and include planning and fluid intelligence. That is, reasoning and problem solving. 119. The prefrontal cortex plays a significant role in mediating executive functions. 117. 119. 120. Planning involves activation of the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, DLPFC, anterior cingulate cortex, angular prefrontal cortex, right prefrontal cortex, and supramarginal gyrus. 120. Working memory manipulation involves the DLPFC, inferior frontal gyrus, and areas of the parietal cortex. 117. 120. Inhibitory control involves multiple areas of the prefrontal cortex, as well as the caudate nucleus and subthalamic nucleus. 119. 120. 121. Physiology. Neurotransmission. Main article. Neurotransmission further information. Summation. Neurophysiology. Brain activity is made possible by the interconnections of neurons that are linked together to reach their targets. 122. A neuron consists of a cell body, axon, and dendrites. Dendrites are often extensive branches that receive information in the form of signals from the axon terminals of other neurons. The signals received may cause the neuron to initiate an action potential, an electrochemical signal or nerve impulse, which is sent along its axon to the axon terminal, to connect with the dendrites or with the cell body of another neuron. An action potential is initiated at the initial segment of an axon, which contains a complex of proteins. 123. When an action potential reaches the axon terminal it triggers the release of a neurotransmitter at a synapse that propagates a signal that acts on the target cell. 124. These chemical neurotransmitters include dopamine, serotonin, GABA, glutamate, and acetylcholine. 125. GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, and glutamate is the major excitatory neurotransmitter. 126. Neurons link at synapses to form neural pathways, neural circuits, and large elaborate network systems such as the salience network and the default mode network, and the activity between them is driven by the process of neurotransmission. Metabolism. The brain consumes up to 20% of the energy used by the human body, more than any other organ, 127. In humans, Blood glucose is the primary source of energy for most cells and is critical for normal function in a number of tissues, including the brain. 128. The human brain consumes approximately 60% of blood glucose in fasted, sedentary individuals. 128. Brain metabolism normally relies upon blood glucose as an energy source, but during times of low glucose, such as fasting, endurance exercise, or limited carbohydrate intake, the brain uses ketone bodies for fuel with a smaller need for glucose. The brain can also utilize lactate during exercise. 129. The brain stores glucose in the form of glycogen, albeit in significantly smaller amounts than that found in the liver or skeletal muscle. 130. Long. Chain fatty acids cannot cross the blood-brain barrier, but the liver can break these down to produce ketone bodies. However, Short-chain fatty acids, for example, butyric acid, propionic acid, and acetic acid, and the medium-chain fatty acids, octanoic acid and heptanoic acid, can cross the blood-brain barrier and be metabolized by brain cells. 131, 132, 133. Although the human brain represents only 2% of the body weight, it receives 15% of the cardiac output. 20% of total body oxygen consumption, and 25% of total body glucose utilization. 134. The brain mostly uses glucose for energy. And deprivation of glucose, as can happen in hypoglycemia, can result in loss of consciousness. 135. The energy consumption of the brain does not vary greatly over time. But active regions of the cortex consume somewhat more energy than inactive regions. 
This fact forms the basis for the functional brain imaging methods PET and 3 136. These functional imaging techniques provide a 3. Dimensional image of metabolic activity. 137. The function of sleep is not fully understood. However, there is evidence that sleep enhances the clearance of metabolic waste products, some of which are potentially neurotoxic, from the brain and may also permit repair. 52. 138. 139. Evidence suggests that the increased clearance of metabolic waste during sleep occurs via increased functioning of the glymphatic system. 52. Sleep may also have an effect on cognitive function by weakening in necessary connections. 140. Research. The brain is not fully understood, and research is ongoing. 141. Neuroscientists, along with researchers from allied disciplines, study how the human brain works. The boundaries between the specialties of neuroscience, neurology and other disciplines such as psychiatry have faded as they are all influenced by basic research in neuroscience. Neuroscience research has expanded considerably in recent decades. The Decade of the Brain, an initiative of the United States government in the 1990s, is considered to have marked much of this increase in research, 142, and was followed in 2013 by the Brain Initiative, 143. The Human Connect Home Project was a five-year study launched in 2009 to analyze the anatomical and functional connections of parts of the brain, and has provided much data, 141. Methods. Information about the structure and function of the human brain comes from a variety of experimental methods including animals and humans. Information about brain trauma and stroke has provided information about the function of parts of the brain and the effects of brain damage. Neuroimaging is used to visualize the brain and record brain activity. Electrophysiology is used to measure, record and monitor the electrical activity of the cortex. Measurements may be of local field potentials of cortical areas, or of the activity of a single neuron. An electroencephalogram can record the electrical activity of the cortex using electrodes placed non-invasively on the scalp, 144, 145. Invasive measures include electrocorticography, which uses electrodes placed directly on the exposed surface of the brain. This method is used in cortical stimulation mapping, used in the study of the relationship between cortical areas and their systemic function, 146 by using much smaller microelectrodes, single. Unit recordings can be made from a single neuron that give a high spatial resolution and high temporal resolution. This has enabled the linking of brain activity to behavior, and the creation of neuronal maps, 147. Imaging. Further information, magnetic resonance imaging of the brain functional neuroimaging techniques show changes in brain activity that relate to the function of specific brain areas. One technique is functional magnetic resonance imaging, FMRI, which has the advantages over earlier methods of SPECT and PET of not needing the use of radioactive materials and of offering a higher resolution, 148. Another technique is functional near-infrared spectroscopy. These methods rely on the hemodynamic response that shows changes in brain activity in relation to changes in blood flow, useful in mapping functions to brain areas, 149. Resting state three looks at the interaction of brain regions whilst the brain is not performing a specific task. 150. This is also used to show the default mode network. Any electrical current generates a magnetic field. Neural oscillations induce weak magnetic fields, and in functional magnetoencephalography, the current produced can show localized brain function in high resolution. 151. Tractography uses MRI and image analysis to create 3D images of the nerve tracts of the brain. Connectograms give a graphical representation of the neural connections of the brain. 152. Differences in brain structure can be measured in some disorders, notably schizophrenia and dementia. Different biological approaches using imaging have given more insight for example into the disorders of depression and obsessive-compulsive disorder. A key source of information about the function of brain regions is the effects of damage to them. 153. Advances in neuroimaging have enabled objective insights into mental disorders, leading to faster diagnosis, more accurate prognosis, and better monitoring. 154. Gene and protein expression. Main article. 
Bioinformatics see also. List of neuroscience databases Bioinformatics is a field of study that includes the creation and advancement of databases and computational and statistical techniques that can be used in studies of the human brain, particularly in the areas of gene and protein expression. Bioinformatics and studies in genomics and functional genomics generated the need for DNA annotation, a transcriptome technology, identifying genes, and their end location and function, 155, 156, 157, gene cards as a major database. As of 2017, just under 20,000 protein coding genes are seen to be expressed in the human, 155, and some 400 of these genes are brain-specific, 158, 159. The data that has been provided on gene expression in the brain has fueled further research into a number of disorders. The long-term use of alcohol, for example, has shown altered gene expression in the brain and cell-type-specific changes that may relate to alcohol use disorder. 160. These changes have been noted in the synaptic transcriptome in the prefrontal cortex and are seen as a factor causing the drive to alcohol dependence and also to other substance abuses. 161. Other related studies have also shown evidence of synaptic alterations and their loss in the aging brain. Changes in gene expression alter the levels of proteins in various pathways and this has been shown to be evident in synaptic contact dysfunction or loss. This dysfunction has been seen to affect many structures of the brain and has a marked effect on inhibitory neurons resulting in a decreased level of neurotransmission and subsequent cognitive decline and disease. 162, 163. Clinical Significance Injury Injury to the brain can manifest in many ways. Traumatic brain injury, for example received in contact sport, after a fall, or a traffic or work accident, can be associated with both immediate and longer-term problems. Immediate problems may include bleeding within the brain. This may compress the brain tissue or damage its blood supply. Bruising to the brain may occur. Bruising may cause widespread damage to the nerve tracts that can lead to a condition of diffuse axonal injury. 164. A fractured skull, injury to a particular area, deafness, and concussion are also possible immediate developments. In addition to the site of injury, the opposite side of the brain may be affected, termed a contraco injury. Longer-term issues that may develop include post-traumatic stress disorder and hydrocephalus. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy can develop following multiple head injuries. 165. Disease. Neurodegenerative diseases result in progressive damage to different parts of the brain's function and worsen with age. Common examples include dementia such as Alzheimer's disease, alcoholic dementia or vascular dementia, Parkinson's disease, and other rare or infectious, genetic, or metabolic causes such as Huntington's disease, motor neuron diseases, HIV dementia, syphilis-related dementia and Wilson's disease. Neurodegenerative diseases can affect different parts of the brain and can affect movement, memory, and cognition. 166. The brain, although protected by the blood-brain barrier, can be affected by infections including viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Infection may be of the meninges, meningitis, the brain matter, encephalitis, or within the brain matter, such as a cerebral abscess. 167. Rare prion diseases including Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease and its variant. And Kuru may also affect the brain. 167. Tumors. Brain tumors can be either benign or cancerous. Most malignant tumors arise from another part of the body, most commonly from the lung, breast and skin. 168. Cancers of brain tissue can also occur and originate from any tissue in and around the brain. Meningioma, cancer of the meninges around the brain, is more common than cancers of brain tissue. 168. Cancers within the brain may cause symptoms related to their size or position with symptoms including headache and nausea, or the gradual development of focal symptoms such as gradual difficulty seeing, swallowing, talking, or as a change of mood. 168. Cancers are in general investigated through the use of CT scans and MRI scans. 
A variety of other tests including blood tests and lumbar puncture may be used to investigate for the cause of the cancer and evaluate the type and stage of the cancer. 168. The corticosteroid dexamethasone is often given to decrease the swelling of brain tissue around a tumor. Surgery may be considered. However, given the complex nature of many tumors are based on tumor stage or type, radiotherapy or chemotherapy may be considered more suitable. 168. Mental disorders. Mental disorders, such as depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, obsessive-compulsive disorder, Tourette syndrome, and addiction are known to relate to the functioning of the brain. 121, 125, 169, treatment for mental disorders may include psychotherapy, psychiatry, social intervention and personal recovery work or cognitive behavioral therapy. The underlying issues and associated prognosis vary significantly between individuals. 170. Epilepsy. Epileptic seizures are thought to relate to abnormal electrical activity. 171. Seizure activity can manifest as absence of consciousness, focal effects such as limb movement or impediments of speech, or be generalized in nature. 171. Status epilepticus refers to a seizure or a series of seizures that have not terminated within five minutes. 172. Seizures have a large number of causes, however many seizures occur without a definitive cause being found. In a person with epilepsy, risk factors for further seizures may include sleeplessness, drug and alcohol intake, and stress. Seizures may be assessed using blood tests, EEG and various medical imaging techniques based on the medical history and exam findings. 171. In addition to treating an underlying cause and reducing exposure to risk factors, anticonvulsant medications can play a role in preventing further seizures. 171. Congenital. Some brain disorders such as Tay-Sachs disease 173 are congenital, 174, and linked to genetic and chromosomal mutations. 174. A rare group of congenital cephalic disorders known as lysencephaly is characterized by the lack of, or inadequacy of, cortical folding. 175. Normal development of the brain can be affected during pregnancy by nutritional deficiencies. 176. Teratogens. 177. Infectious diseases. 178. And by the use of recreational drugs and alcohol. 176, 179. Stroke? Main article. Stroke? CT scan of a cerebral hemorrhage, showing an intraparenchymal bleed, bottom arrow, with surrounding edema, top arrow. A stroke is a decrease in blood supply to an area of the brain causing cell death and brain injury. This can lead to a wide range of symptoms, including the fast symptoms of facial droop, arm weakness, and speech difficulties including with speaking and finding words or forming sentences, 180. Symptoms relate to the function of the affected area of the brain and can point to the likely side and cause of the stroke. Difficulties with movement, speech, or sight usually relate to the cerebrum, whereas imbalance, double vision, vertigo and symptoms affecting more than one side of the body usually relate to the brain stem or cerebellum, 181. Most strokes result from loss of blood supply, typically because of an embolus, rupture of a fatty plaque or narrowing of small arteries. Strokes can also result from bleeding within the brain. 182. Transient ischemic attacks, TIAs, are strokes in which symptoms resolve within 24 hours. 182. Investigation into the stroke will involve a medical examination, including a neurological examination, and the taking of a medical history focusing on the duration of the symptoms and risk factors, including high blood pressure, atrial fibrillation, and smoking, 183, 184. Further investigation is needed in younger patients, 183. An ECG and biotelemetry may be conducted to identify atrial fibrillation. An ultrasound can investigate narrowing of the carotid arteries. An echocardiogram can be used to look for clots within the heart, Diseases of the heart valves or the presence of a patent for a Amenovali. 183. Blood tests are routinely done as part of the workup including diabetes tests and a lipid profile. 
183. Some treatments for stroke are time critical. These include clot dissolution or surgical removal of a clot for ischemic strokes and decompression for hemorrhagic strokes. 185. 186. As stroke is time critical. 187. Hospitals and even pre. Hospital care of stroke involves expedited investigations. Usually a CT scan to investigate for a hemorrhagic stroke and a CT or MR angiogram to evaluate arteries that supply the brain. 183. MRI scans, not as widely available, may be able to demonstrate the affected area of the brain more accurately, particularly with ischemic stroke. 183. Having experienced a stroke, a person may be admitted to a stroke unit, and treatments may be directed as preventing future strokes including ongoing anticoagulation, such as aspirin or clopidogrel, antihypertensives, and lipid-lowering drugs. 185. A multidisciplinary team including speech pathologists, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, and psychologists plays a large role in supporting a person affected by a stroke and their rehabilitation. 188. 183. A history of stroke increases the risk of developing dementia by around 70%, and recent stroke increases the risk by around 120%. 189. Brain death. Main article. Brain death. Brain death refers to an irreversible total loss of brain function. 190. 191. This is characterized by coma, loss of reflexes, and apnea. 190. However, the declaration of brain death varies geographically and is not always accepted. 191. In some countries there is also a defined syndrome of brain stem death. 192. Declaration of brain death can have profound implications as the declaration, under the principle of medical futility, will be associated with the withdrawal of life support. 193. And as those with brain death often have organs suitable for organ donation. 191. 194. The process is often made more difficult by poor communication with patients' families. 195. When brain death is suspected, reversible differential diagnoses such as electrolyte, neurological and drug-related cognitive suppression need to be excluded. 190. 193. Testing for reflex ESP can be of help in the decision, as can the absence of response and breathing. 193. Clinical observations, including a total lack of responsiveness, a known diagnosis, and neural imaging evidence, may all play a role in the decision to pronounce brain death. 190. Society and culture. Neuroanthropology is the study of the relationship between culture and the brain. It explores how the brain gives rise to culture, and how culture influences brain development. 196. Cultural differences and their relation to brain development and structure are researched in different fields. 197. The Mind. Main articles, Cognition and Mind. The philosophy of the mind studies such issues as the problem of understanding consciousness and the mind body problem. The relationship between the brain and the mind is a significant challenge both philosophically and scientifically. This is because of the difficulty in explaining how mental activities, such as thoughts and emotions, can be implemented by physical structures such as neurons and synapses, or by any other type of physical mechanism. This difficulty was expressed by Gottfried Leibniz in the analogy known as Leibniz's mill. One is obliged to admit that perception and what depends upon it is inexplicable on mechanical principles, that is, by figures and motions. In imagining that there is a machine whose construction would enable it to think, to sense, and to have perception, one could conceive it enlarged while retaining the same proportions, so that one could enter into it, just like into a windmill. Supposing this, one should, when visiting within it, find only parts pushing one another, and never anything by which to explain a perception. M. Leibniz, Monodolog, 199. Doubt about the possibility of a mechanistic explanation of thought drove Rene Descartes and most other philosophers along with him, to dualism, the belief that the mind is to some degree independent of the brain. 200. There has always, however, been a strong argument in the opposite direction. There is clear empirical evidence that physical manipulations of, or injuries to, the brain, 
for example by drugs or by lesions, respectively, can affect the mind in potent and intimate ways. 201, 202, in the 19th century, the case of Phineas Gage, a railway worker who was injured by a stout iron rod passing through his brain, convinced both researchers and the public that cognitive functions were localized in the brain. 198, following this line of thinking, a large body of empirical evidence for a close relationship between brain activity and mental activity has led most neuroscientists and contemporary philosophers to be materialists, believing that mental phenomena are ultimately the result of, or reducible to, physical phenomena. 203. Brain Size. Main article. Brain size The size of the brain and a person's intelligence are not strongly related. 204. Studies tend to indicate small to moderate correlations, averaging around 0.3 to 0.4, between brain volume and IQ. 205. The most consistent associations are observed within the frontal, temporal, and parietal lobes, the hippocampi, and the cerebellum, but these only account for a relatively small amount of variance in IQ, which itself has only a partial relationship to general intelligence and real-world performance. 206, 207. Other animals, including whales and elephants have larger brains than humans. However, when the brain-to-body mass ratio is taken into account, the human brain is almost twice as large as that of a bottlenose dolphin, and three times as large as that of a chimpanzee. However, a high ratio does not of itself demonstrate intelligence. Very small animals have high ratios and the tree shrew has the largest quotient of any mammal. 208. In popular culture, research has disproved some common misconceptions about the brain. These include both ancient and modern myths. It is not true that neurons are not replaced after the age of two, nor that only 10% of the brain is used. 209. Popular culture has also oversimplified the lateralization of the brain, suggesting that functions are completely specific to one side of the brain or the other. Akio Mori coined the term game brain for the unreliably supported theory that spending long periods playing video games harmed the brain's prefrontal region and the expression of emotion and creativity. 210. Historically, the brain featured in popular culture through phrenology, a pseudoscience that assigned personality attributes to different regions of the cortex. The cortex remains important in popular culture as covered in books and satire. 211. 212. The brain features in science fiction, with themes such as brain transplants and cyborgs, beings with features like partly artificial brains. 213. The 1942 science fiction book, adapted three times for cinema, Donovan's brain tells the tale of an isolated brain kept alive in vitro, gradually taken over by a malign intelligence. 214. History. Main article. History of neuroscience early history. The Edwin Smith Papyrus, an ancient Egyptian medical treat is written in the 17th century BC, contains the earliest recorded reference to the brain. The hieroglyph for brain, occurring eight times in this papyrus, describes the symptoms, diagnosis, and prognosis of two traumatic injuries to the head. The papyrus mentions the external surface of the brain, the effects of injury, including seizures and aphasia, the meninges, and cerebrospinal fluid. 215, 216. In the 5th century BC, Alcmeon of Croton and Magna Graecia first considered the brain to be the seat of the mind. 216. Also in the 5th century BC in Athens, the unknown author of On the Sacred Disease, a medical treatise which is part of the Hippocratic corpus and traditionally attributed to Hippocrates, believed the brain to be the seat of intelligence. Aristotle in his biology initially believed the heart to be the seat of intelligence, and saw the brain as a cooling mechanism for the blood. He reasoned that humans are more rational than the beasts because, among other reasons, they have a larger brain to cool their hot-bloodedness. 217. Aristotle did describe the meninges and distinguished between the cerebrum and cerebellum. 218. Herophilus of Chalcedon in the 4th and 3rd centuries BC distinguished the cerebrum and the cerebellum and provided the first clear description of the ventricles, and with Erasistratus of Cius experimented on living brains. Their works are now mostly lost, and we know about their achievements due mostly to secondary sources.
some of their discoveries had to be rediscovered a millennium after their deaths. 216. Anatomist physician Galen in the 2nd century AD, during the time of the Roman Empire, dissected the brains of sheep, monkeys, dogs, and pigs. He concluded that, as the cerebellum was denser than the brain, it must control the muscles, while as the cerebrum was soft, it must be where the senses were processed. Galen further theorized that the brain functioned by movement of animal spirits through the ventricles. 216, 217. Renaissance. In 1316, Mondino de Luzzi's Anatomia began the modern study of brain anatomy. 219. Niccolo Massa discovered in 1536 that the ventricles were filled with fluid. 220. Archangelo Piccolomini of Rome was the first to distinguish between the cerebrum and cerebral cortex. 221. In 1543, Andreas Vesalius published his seven volume De Humani Corporis Fabrica. 221. 222. 223. The seventh book covered the brain and I. With detailed images of the ventricles, cranial nerves, pituitary gland, meninges, structures of the eye, the vascular supply to the brain and spinal cord, and an image of the peripheral nerves. 224. Vesalius rejected the common belief that the ventricles were responsible for brain function, arguing that many animals have a similar ventricular system to humans, but no true intelligence. 221. Rene Descartes proposed a theory of dualism to tackle the issue of the brain's relation to the mind. He suggested that the pineal gland was where the mind interacted with the body after recording the brain mechanisms responsible for circulating cerebrospinal fluid. 220. This dualism likely provided impetus for later anatomists to further explore the relationship between the anatomical and functional aspects of brain anatomy. 225. Thomas Willis is considered a second pioneer in the study of neurology and brain science. In 1664 in Cerebri Anatom, Latin, Anatomy of the Brain, c. followed by Cerebral Pathology in 1667. In these he described the structure of the cerebellum the ventricles, the cerebral hemispheres, the brain stem, and the cranial nerves, studied its blood supply, and proposed functions associated with different areas of the brain. 221. The circle of Willis was named after his investigations into the blood supply of the brain, and he was the first to use the word neurology. 226. Willis removed the brain from the body when examining it and rejected the commonly held view that the cortex only consisted of blood vessels and the view of the last two millennia that the cortex was only incidentally important. 221. In the late 19th century, Emil du Boirium and Dan Hermann von Helmholtz, following the work of their teacher Johannes Peter Muller showed the electrical impulses which pass along nerves, but unlike Muller's views, that such impulses were able to be observed. 227. Richard Caton in 1875 demonstrated electrical impulses in the cerebral hemispheres of rabbits and monkeys. 228. In the 1820s, Jean-Pierre Florence pioneered the experimental method of damaging specific parts of animal brains describing the effects on movement and behavior. 229. Modern period. Further information. Neuropsychiatry studies of the brain became more sophisticated with the use of the microscope and the development of a silver staining method by Camillo Golgi during the 1880s. This was able to show the intricate structures of single neurons. 230. This was used by Santiago Ramon y Cajal and led to the formation of the neuron doctrine, the then revolutionary hypothesis that the neuron is the functional unit of the brain. He used microscopy to uncover many cell types and proposed functions for the cells he saw. 230. For this, Golgi and Kajal are considered the founders of 20th century neuroscience, both sharing the Nobel Prize in 1906 for their studies and discoveries in this field. 230. Charles Sherrington published his influential 1906 work The Integrative Action of the Nervous System Examining the Function of Reflexes, Evolutionary Development of the Nervous System, Functional Specialization of the Brain and layout and cellular function of the central nervous system. 231. John Farquhar Fulton, founded the Journal of Neurophysiology and published the first comprehensive textbook on the physiology of the nervous system during 1938. 232. 
Neuroscience during the 20th century began to be recognized as a distinct unified academic discipline, with David Ryach, Francis O. Schmidt, and Stephen Cuffler playing critical roles in establishing the field. 233. Ryach originated the integration of basic anatomical and physiological research with clinical psychiatry at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, starting in the 1950s. 234. During the same period, Schmidt established the Neuroscience Research Program, an inter-university and international organization, bringing together biology, medicine, psychological and behavioral sciences. The word neuroscience itself arises from this program. 235. Paul Broca associated regions of the brain with specific functions, in particular language in Broca's area, following work on brain damage patients. 236. John Hullings Jackson described the function of the motor cortex by watching the progression of epileptic seizures through the body. Carl Wernick described a region associated with language comprehension and production. Corbin Ian Broadman divided regions of the brain based on the appearance of cells. 236. By 1950, Sherrington, Papez, and MacLean had identified many of the brain's stem and limbic system functions. 237. 238. 239. The capacity of the brain to re-organize and change with age, and a recognized critical development period, were attributed to neuroplasticity, pioneered by Margaret Kennard, who experimented on monkeys during the 1930 negative 40s. 240. Harvey Cushing, 1869 1939, is recognized as the first proficient brain surgeon in the world. 241. In 1937, Walter Dandy began the practice of vascular neurosurgery by performing the first surgical clipping of an intracranial aneurysm. 242. Comparative anatomy. See also, evolution of the brain. The human brain has many properties that are common to all vertebrate brains. 243. Many of its features are common to all mammalian brains. 244. Most notably a six. Layered cerebral cortex and a set of associated structures. 245, including the hippocampus and amygdala. 246, the cortex is proportionally larger in greater mammals and humans than many other mammals. 247, humans have more association cortex, sensory and motor parts than smaller mammals such as the rat and the cat. 248, as a primate brain, the human brain has a much larger cerebral cortex, in proportion to body size, than most mammals. 246, and a highly developed visual system, 249, 250. As a hominid brain, the human brain is substantially enlarged even in comparison to the brain of a typical monkey. The sequence of human evolution from Australopithecus, 4 million years ago, to Homo sapiens, modern humans, was marked by a steady increase in brain size, 251, 252, as brain size increased. This altered the size and shape of the skull. 253. From about 600 cubic centimeters in Homo habilis to an average of about 1,520 cubic centimeters in Homo neanderthalensis. 254. Differences in DNA, gene expression, and gene environment interactions help explain the differences between the function of the human brain and other primates. 255. See also. Neuroscience portal thinking portal cerebral atrophy cortical spreading depression enchanted loom large-scale brain networks.